AI is awesome, but it also hurts your ability to get people to trust you. Your ideal customer is thinking, is this really Joanne or am I talking to ChatGPT? In today's episode, I'm talking to Gavin Hammer, founder of StoryPrompt, about how you can use video to build trust with your audience, who is increasingly wondering if you really exist or if they're talking to a robot. Hello, and welcome to Tiny Marketing. I'm Sarah Noel Block, and I teach small marketing departments that are tired of feeling overwhelmed and under-resourced how to build and manage effective and efficient marketing strategies that work for them. Get ready, it's time to dig in and get a big impact with your tiny team. Can you just first tell me a little bit about your your story? How did you, actually on LinkedIn, you told me a little bit about how you ended up starting Story Prompt and it had to do with Story Brand, right? Yeah, so I guess there's a, a backstory to that. So I, I founded Sendable back in 2009, my previous company, and we went through a period of like slow growth around 2016 to 2018, roughly. And I, and I was looking for a way to kind of stand out alongside so many other competitors in our space. So we had around 250 plus competitors. And I thought like, how can we be different? You know, everyone has AI and bots and like, you know, faceless teams that you can't get to see. So what if we could kind of lean into our story more and kind of make that our thing that we're a smaller, more human alternative to the likes of Hootsuite and Sprout Social? Uh, so I actually, I went to social media marketing world. I think it was like 20, what was it? Probably 2016, 2017, whatever it was. Sorry, no, after that, it was like 2019. So after we had the slow period, went to that conference. And basically everyone was talking about storytelling. Like storytelling is this huge thing. You have to build a brand, tell stories. So I figured what if we could use our story and kind of really tell the story through podcasts, through our content, through our websites, wherever we could. And then I read the book Story Brand. Yeah, so that, that kind of transformed Sendable back then. Yeah. Okay, so we ended up connecting because I was talking about Story Brand on LinkedIn and you commented on that about and telling me about that story, that connection with Story Prompt. And so I started using it and it really, like not only do you get that, empathy and trustworthy piece of the story brand with story prompts tools, but you can do it a lot easier. So something that a lot of marketers have trouble with is generating those assets for case studies or getting testimonials from their customers. And this is so much easier with story prompt, but you recently added some features to it that make community building so much easier And I know we're going to be digging into that in a minute, but I'm really excited about this aspect with the campfires for like coaching, consulting. People are living an asynchronous life now. Nobody wants to be on these (laughs) in-person, one-on-one calls and have their days filled to the brim. Oh my gosh. My Google calendar (laughs) constantly is telling me, girl, you have too many meetings. (laughs) But this is a solution to that. So I'm excited to get into that. First, let's talk about that first topic. How to stand out in a competitive market when you don't have a big budget. Mm. What's your advice on this? I talk about this all the time. I want to hear your advice. (laughs) Yeah, so as I said before, kind of leaning into your story more, uh, being vulnerable, being open, being transparent. But we we went through a strategy uh, back at Sendable again where I wanted to kind of show our faces more, so be more human. and. So I think one way to stand out is to just use video everywhere that you can. Because most people are afraid of video. Most of your, I guess most, most alternatives in your space, competitors, would be scared to put themselves out there. So if you can leverage video more, show your face more, build that trust factor, the kind of no mm-hmm. like trust uh, thing, I think, I think it's so powerful. Uh, so I think, I think that's, that's something we did at Sendable was we actually had a monthly video newsletter we'd have the whole team record just a 30-second update of what they had done the previous month. We'd then put that onto YouTube and send out a YouTube email. So actually have the the email with the YouTube video embedded. And that just led to so much trust, so much engagement from our customers. Other thing is just to analyze every touch point with with your audience and customers. So wherever you have, so so say on your website, if you have a bot welcoming your, your customers, it's far better to have a human or to even lean into the fact that you don't have a bot. So, you know, everyone else is using bots and AI. 
you take the alternative yeah. route and say, we're the more human alternative, which we have actually on, on Sendable's website right now and on Story Prompt. We have the fact that we are human led as opposed to AI and bot led. So I think leaning into the human aspect, especially in a world where everyone's using AI these days, you can kind of build trust that you are the person behind the company, not some machine. Yeah. Uh, it's a great way to stand out. You know, um, those are a few things, but I, I can go into more uh, later as well. That is a really good point with so much AI. People are questioning, like, am I actually getting to know you or is this chat GBT's version of you? But at least at this point, <laughs> AI cannot be you. So when you're on video, you're actually true, like truly showing up for your audience and presenting yourself. And often I talk to a lot of like B2B service companies. Trust is the barrier to sales is they don't trust you. You haven't mm -hmm. given them a reason to trust you. But video is such an easy way to do that, especially if you are educating them and telling yeah. them how to solve their problem. That's how you build trust. That's how they get to like you in the first place and want to work with you. One other thing that I used to do at Sendable, and I'm doing at Story Prompt as well, is rather than talking about your business, you talk about their problems. So, mm -hmm. so what, are, what are the problems that your customers face? Keep talking about that stuff so it shows that you understand them and like their needs. So if your customers are coaches, you know, if, if they're business coaches, like ours are at Sendable, or sorry, at Story Prompt, if you talk about their needs, or their problems, like time management, like you said earlier, the calendars are blocked with all their client calls. Yeah. Talk about that a lot. And then eventually you kind of throw in that you have a solution or here are some tips you can, you can take. But really, it's more about talking about the problem more than what you offer as a company. And then you can build trust that way. But one other way that we did this at Sendable, um, it's a very easy thing to do, but where everyone is using stock photos in their blog posts. You know, most people will put a stock photo from Unsplash as their kind of thumbnail image. If you can just get some authentic photos of your customers or of your team and use those instead, then when you have social media posts going out, they actually pop, they actually stand out, and they keep seeing your face or your clients' faces. So it's, it's far more authentic, far more human, and far more trustworthy. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I, I do that. I use just mostly stock photos in my like, blog posts out of pure laziness, but maybe I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> maybe it should be more my face. I love, though, the idea of using story prompt and embedding those videos into those blog posts, too. You can... Mm -hmm. Also have conversations with customers asynchronously and use those to amplify or add experience and expertise to your content, which is like Google recently came out with like, it was always EAT for SEO and now it's EEAT. That's how you add that expertise and showing that like, you know what you're talking about because you have this case study that you're essentially producing and adding to that blog post or podcast or whatever. Yeah. No, this is kind of showing proof at the end of your content that mm -hmm. what you're saying is actually true. Yeah. But also even, even gathering thought leadership content. Mm -hmm. So if you want to kind of build trust, you can show that you're in touch with experts in your space and you're collecting content from them. So UGC from those thought leaders are you on video. And the fact that they can kind of be part of your blog post, part of your content, and kind of reaching out to your audience, it makes your audience trust you more, I think. Yeah, that is a great point because you can you can just send someone a link with a prompt already attached to it, asking them a question. It takes 30 seconds for them to answer it and then you embed it into the content and it's instantly elevated. Yeah. I mean, something I did, I think it was the end of last year, I just sent a prompt out to a bunch of experts talking about their like, thoughts and what's, what's coming in, in marketing uh, in the next year. So you know, I got a bunch of uh, videos back, put them together, and was able to be, kind of put content out on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube as well. So it's really easy just to, just to gather that content and use it in your, in, your, in your marketing strategy. Yes. So I work with a lot of people who do research reports, or they have that as part of their content creation. So they have original content that they can create that no one else can have. And you get more PR power with it. But something that is part of their strategy is asking experts to include like quotes. What is your opinion on the result in this research report? But what if you sent a video prompt to them to ask that and you embedded the video 
version of that into the report. I think it would be a lot livelier. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Your research report and you fall asleep, but that is like an interactive, engaging piece of content when you're including like multimedia. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, I think it's it's pretty commonly known now that most people are going to prefer consuming video content over text, which is why you can drive more engagement. So if you do put content out there that's on video, you're more likely to get people to actually view that content than a piece of text. Yeah. So what makes this a good choice for people who have a small marketing department or a small budget? You mean like taking this human-led approach to marketing as opposed to, yeah, um, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the one thing is being able to stand out, like we said before. So, like in, in my past, I would pretend I had a bigger team. I would kind of fake it, pretend we had a huge team, and I told our customers that we were much bigger than we were. Uh, I even I even created fake employees <laughs> to pretend that we were bigger. But then I realized, as Sendable <laughs> grew and as Story Prompt's growing now, people really they, they they like the fact that you're smaller. So because of that, if you're a, if you have a small marketing team. If you can show that you are a small company and you know you haven't got a huge marketing team, you haven't got a massive budget to spend, and be open about that, and kind of produce more human-led content. So instead of kind of paying writers to write content for you, I mean, it's obviously useful, but you can just get content in your company. So you can just send a prompt or a link to your CEO, get him to just give an update or just a few words of wisdom, and that's that's your marketing content ready to go. Rather than having to hire a big marketing company or grow your team. You can use the people in your organization, your other employees, to help you produce the content through the stories that they've been uh, kind of sharing or creating themselves. And so even, even at Sendable, we used to, uh, I used to kind of bring them on the podcast. So bring the team on the podcast. I, w- I was the CEO, I was hosting it. Ask them about their week, about their month at Sendable, what they're working on, what their problems were and challenges. And then from that, we had content again to attract an audience. So I don't think you need to have a huge marketing team to make an impact. I think you have a team, if you have a small team, and you have stories to tell. Those stories are so powerful. Yeah, I like that idea too, because especially with client-facing employees where customers will be interacting with them, having the opportunity to highlight them and get to know them ahead of time before that sales interaction yeah, kind of eases <laughs> that barrier to entry. Yeah, I mean, even for us, we used to do... Um, so our, our support system was in Zendesk. And I used to have the, the, the support team actually sending videos out to customers. So rather than typing the response to a support ticket, they'd actually record themselves with a screen share, so the face and the, and the screen, talking the, 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 the customer through how to solve the problem. So I think if you can just bring in your face, bring in video again, you can create that word of mouth marketing. It, it kind of happens behind the scenes where your, your customers will say, oh, you should try Sendable, try Story Prompt. Yeah. Because they are more human, they're more helpful. I, I know so-and-so from the company. I think that's so powerful. And, that, and that, so from that, you have your customers acting as your marketing team. So really, if you can turn your customers into a marketing team, being a small marketing department, that's so powerful and so much more, more trustworthy than having just a huge marketing team putting out content. Yeah, I actually, I was a Sendable customer, as you know, <laughs> when I was working corporate. And I did have a question and I do remember getting that video. <laughs> that oh, really? Oh, amazing. response to me. <laughs> and I was really surprised. To yeah. get that, I was like, hmm, I thought I was just one of the masses <laughs> getting this. <laughs> so I think if you can make, if you can create moments of delight, uh, like even me as a CEO at Sendable, who had thousands of users and hundreds signing up like every week, I would take the time uh, every, uh, every Friday of going to LinkedIn and manually send a message to all the new customers, welcoming them to, you know, to, to, to Sendable. And they were so amazed that the CEO would actually take, take his yeah. time to reach out that they then told their friends about it. So I think if you just take your, your touch points, like I said before, and try and make them amazing, you can create a marketing engine from that as well. I want to springboard off of something that you said with like using your employees for your marketing. So when I work one-to-one with companies, when I provide service for them, it's usually with companies that don't have a marketing department. And you had a really good point that your employees can be a huge asset to marketing because they are the subject matter experts and including them in the marketing creation is so helpful because you're teaching so much and you're essentially doing that no like trust factor because they're building a relationship with the people they'll actually be interacting with. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about community-led growth. 
how do you do this with story prompt? What is community led growth? Let's start there. Let's start at that one. Yeah, so I didn't actually know the term while I was building Sendable, but I realized we were actually doing it to kind of grow the company. And this just kind of led us to our acquisition, uh, which was uh, two years ago now. Crazy how time I did us. not know that but it was acquired. <laughs> it's been, yeah, it was acquired two years ago. So I walked away from the company. Um, but like these actions really led us to be acquired. So really what it is, is it's bringing people that you serve together around a shared purpose. And then through that shared purpose, you drive human connection, uh, learning, and I guess... Uh, referrals from those customers. So you can kind of create advocacy from them because of this movement you've created. So I think the first thing we did at Sendable, which I'm doing now at Story Prompt 2, is really to identify a problem. Like what is what is it that most of your customers or clients face right now? What is that problem? That's your kind of North Star as the brand. Mm-hmm. And then and from there you define like how can you get a, a movement uh, of, like, of followers or of a community that, that can take them to that promised land. So, so if, if the problem is time management, you've got too many meetings, what is the path to success for those people, for, for your community members? And from that, if you define the path and define the goal, you then create a movement around people who want to like, move with you towards that goal. So I think that's what we did at Sendable. We kind of realized storytelling was a big thing. No one else was talking about storytelling uh, as a social media tool. And we made that our North Star. So we, we believe that most of our agency customers struggled to get engagement or wanted more engagement on social media. And that storytelling, being a better storyteller was the answer. So we wanted to help create a movement around storytelling that made marketers better storytellers. And then from there, we created this community of people who wanted to become better storytellers, want to learn about storytelling, all coming together for a common cause. And then through that, our brand was just there facilitating that engagement. And I guess from that, we actually built a brand. So we had people who loved being around Sendable, you know, we, we, we had like live webinars with experts coming and talking about storytelling. We had the podcast about storytelling. We had a community. And that actually led to our brand just growing like crazy over the last two years, which led to our acquisition in the end. Uh, and then obviously, so after that, you have to get personal. So once you have your movement, you have people coming together. As the brand, you have to be more human. You can't just be this logo. You, know? yeah. you have to show that people who in your company are willing to engage and help this movement happen. And once, once your audience, your, your, your community are actually benefiting from your learnings, your, your training, your community, you then collect stories from them. So you collect things like case studies, testimonials, kind of thought leadership content, success stories, and you use that to fuel your community growth. And that's, that's how we grew Sendable. That's what I'm doing with StoryPrompt now. We have our own community in StoryPrompt. And all those things are covered because we're offering video first. So like I said, you know, be more personal. Our community features are all video first. So basically, we, we can talk face-to-face with our members, our users, without having to be on a live Zoom call, without having to use up calendar yeah. time. Uh, and it's, it's so powerful to see your, your, your customers and your clients every single day, just posting a video here and there, and you post back. You share like expertise. They share their thoughts. It's, it's, it's really powerful. And from that, even though I haven't met most of them in person or in a live call, I can meet like 300 people in one place. They know who I am. I know them. And it just builds this trust. I want to highlight an audio highlighter right now, right here, (laughs) two things that you said. So you talked about the problem being the North Star. So anybody who is familiar with StoryBrand, you start with a character and their problem. And everything stems from there. Everything starts from the character who is your customer and what problem they need solved. And obviously the problem that you're choosing that you're focusing on is the one that you can solve. So that is really brilliant. If everyone can take just one thing from this episode, I'm really hoping it's that focus on the problem and how you can help your customer solve it. And the other thing I wanted to highlight, so my other audio highlighter right now is that you're having these relationships built asynchronously. So you can batch this. Something I talk about constantly is batching. So you can have coaching calls. You can have consulting calls. You can answer customer questions asynchronously. Just set aside an afternoon where you're going to answer all of them at the same time. Makes it a lot easier, but it's still really personal. And you can fit it into your schedule so you can have the lifestyle business that you want. Yeah. I mean, something I used to do at Sendable was actually having um, 
weekly office hours. So every, I think it was every Thursday for an hour, I had any customer of ours could come in and just meet with me and ask questions. And they just loved that. You know, we had people turning up, speaking to me for an hour about their business thoughts, like, you know, asking for advice, that kind of thing. So I think with Story Prompt, you can have that always on office hours experience for your clients. Yeah. And maybe even charge them for it. Maybe you can charge them for your expertise. So you charge for access to you. They can come into your space, post a question, you know, I'm stuck on this thing or I need help with this or what's your advice on that? And you can then give them a very thoughtful answer asynchronously. Because when you're live, you don't really think thoughtfully. Often Agreed. You're just on the spot. <laughs> but if you take the time, okay, how am I going to answer this thing on video? You can create such quality content for them asynchronously versus being live. And they can then have that, that clip to use for other things. You know, if they want to come back to it in the future, maybe you want to take that clip of advice you gave to someone and kind of repurpose that on your podcast or in social media channels. Everything you can create, everything you create through conversation in our, in our community spaces can be repurposed. I love that idea. Okay, so steal this idea too, where you have a campfire for like, let's say consultants and coaches. So many of them have podcasts. If you have a campfire where people can leave their questions, you can use that audio for podcast episodes. Let's say you do a bonus episode every month where it's just questions that you've collected and you can answer. Dang, that makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you, if you take it a step further, so the other thing people are doing is they're having on their podcast, they share the link to their space on Story Prompt and inviting their listeners to come meet their guest afterwards. So you can then so you can bring your experts together with your listeners and create your own community just from your audience of, of listeners. Oh, I love that idea. It's like when you're going to a virtual event and then afterwards they're like, hey, we're doing a cocktail hour. That's exactly you it. You go there and you, <laughs> yeah. you build the relationship, but it's the virtual version. Yeah, because they might have questions from the show they want to ask the person, that may, you know, and maybe just, I think bringing them together is just so powerful. Bringing those people together. It's such an easy way to create your, um, if you want to create a community from scratch, if you have an audience, this is the easiest way. Yeah, that is, um, I just, I was telling you before we hit record that I just wrapped up a webinar. It was on partnership marketing. And this just gave me an idea because someone, I was just on someone's podcast and they asked me to create a mastermind for their community. But you could do this in story prompt too, where you can invite someone to do a mastermind in a campfire, and then people can send video um, questions about it. That's what I'm doing, actually. So I have a, I have a founder mastermind group. I haven't oh, launched really? it yet. I'm hoping to launch soon. But essentially, you're going to have, you know, like uh, small spaces. So up to six people in each space. And then, you know, you can run asynchronous masterminds. So you just prompt them with a question every week. Like, mm -hmm. what's, what's your big blocker for the week? What's your big win? And they just, you know, post questions back or post responses back and forth. And then from there, you have this amazing library, again, of content that you could use uh, for the future. I love that. So I was just brainstorming yesterday on a way to kind of make service a hybrid experience. And I thought, well, what if we did a workshop where all of like the data gathering is, is done in there and you walk people through the process and then you break off into small groups, which could totally be done on story prompt. And you have a marketing strategist or a marketing coach go through and critique them and refine like their marketing plans that you're creating together. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if it exists or, or, or <laughs> if it's a horrible idea. And that's the reason I'm the one who thought of it. <laughs> we'll see. That sounds pretty cool, actually. Lots of people can come in and ask questions or kind of share what they're working on. Yeah, they refine feedback. the yeah. marketing plan yeah. that they created in the workshop, but oh, I see. Yeah. they get like one-on-one -on -one support on it. That's really cool. So we'll see. Maybe I'll use Story Prompt <laughs> to <laughs> launch that idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we kind of touched on this last topic that we're going to be getting into already, but AI. How to build trust through video in an AI-driven world. ChatGPT just seemed to take off and... Me and you talked on your podcast not that long ago about like some awesome things you can do with AI too. Yeah. But you don't want to do everything with AI because you use you lose that personal aspect of it. So let's talk a bit about that. So I think I think uh, as a consumer or as a yeah, as a consumer, uh, as you said before, it's hard to know what is generated by AI and what's generated by a human these days. And it only get harder as time goes on as these things improve. 
So I think it's just going to make everyone look the same. And you know, if everyone's writing text, using more text, it's just going to be the sea of sameness, really, I think. And like I was saying before, I think the only way to win is to stand out. I don't think you can be like everyone else. So I would say leveraging AI, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's so powerful. But finding a way to show your human side, to kind of cut through that sameness, uh, yeah. and just, just to be different. So I think that video plays a big part in that. Because you know, the only way that humans can be heard is through video. You know, if everything is just text, generated text from AI with a bit of editing, yeah. how can you tell what is the real story behind that text? Besides, maybe you can read the stories in the text, but it's still not going to be trustworthy. And the only way to build trust is, again, to show your face. So I think when everyone's using AI, all your competitors are doing the same thing. If you can adopt more video in your marketing strategy, you have a better chance of winning in the future. And I think I think the way to use AI is really to help you either editing those videos. So if you get a video back, use AI editors definitely as they come out. Uh, also using AI to kind of create the prompts for humans. Mm -hmm. And then almost like using prompts for AI, but also prompts for humans to produce amazing content. Yeah. So, you know, maybe you ask the AI, okay, give me a give me a, a script I can use for an interview. Or to help, like what questions can I ask in the podcast? And then from there, you're getting the content from a human and you're working with the AI as your assistant to make the content better through the editing. So I think, I think that's where things are going. I think that that's where it's a better place to be. So using AI with humans uh, to help you stand out. Because the worst thing you can be is just another kind of, another bot. one of these tools or a bot. Yeah, you're using too many bots on your website and no one knows if you're real or not. Yeah. Yeah, completely agree with you there. I have seen this trend emerging where people are going more back to the basics when it comes to marketing and relying heavier on collaboration marketing and human-centered marketing because I think people are just kind of off-put by the mass generation through AI. AI is awesome. So I don't want anyone to get the wrong <laughs> idea. I love AI for giving me ideas, outlining content ideas that I have, quicker research. So many great things, but to build that no like trust factor with your audience, you need to be human and you need to show your expertise with your personality, especially with the people we're talking to today, consultants and coaches, people are buying you. <laughs> They're buying your personality, your knowledge, and you need to show up that way. And the one thing that AI can't reproduce is stories. Right, so obviously it can tell yeah. someone else's story, maybe, but it can never tell your personal story. So I think storytelling again will be more important than ever before. Getting those stories heard. So I think having, you know, if you have an AI generated piece of content, it's still important to have a story at the end, like a, a case study, something like you know, kind of something that's that's really authentic, attached to that piece of content. So again, mixing in the AI generated with the authentic, yeah, I think is the key. So no one listening saw me nodding emphatically as you were talking, but I was because I completely agree with you. You can use AI to create a first draft of something, but you need to add that expertise and those stories and that those personal anecdotes and your own personality into that content. So what AI produces should not be what people see. You need to add in those stories, those case studies, expert quotes, subject matter expert interviews, to make it worthwhile. Otherwise, it's just the same bullshit that everyone else is producing. <laughs> um, and then just to add to that, so with this AI world, I think people are going to be drawn to live events. So like you mentioned, you had a live webinar. Yes. I think being live is also really powerful. Obviously, if you can't be live, then you can use something like Story Prompt, which is asynchronous. Yeah. But I, I do think people will be drawn to that, that human connection. If everything is also like dogmatic, <laughs> They'll want to be have have more in person experiences or more experiences with your brand. So I think I think we'll see more of that kind of thing, like more experiential marketing in the future. I think so too. I've been seeing so much more around partnerships, around live video, around in person events, mm -hmm. because people are craving that connection again. We went two, three years without connection, and people are starving for it. Yeah. Just to add one more thing to that. So the other thing is, you know, I, I'm sure you get tons of sales emails, right? Yes. People are now wondering if those emails are just generated by some machine. So some algorithm Very is putting out these things using ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah. So I think that there's, there's power in having video in your emails. 
like more than ever before. Because I get the same emails, uh, like most of them are probably just generated by AI these days. But if I saw someone re- really, if someone recorded a personal video for me, taking the time to know who I am, that'd be amazing. So maybe using like something like ChatGPT to research your target audience, give you a video script to record, and then you record the video. So kind of like taking the AI pieces or content, and again, like I said, just making it more human through video is, is really key. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny because I would, the webinar I was just on, we were talking about pitching strategy at the end of it, how you can pitch these partnerships. And personal video was one of the things that we ended up talking about. So I mean, at this point, I'm going to have to put the replay in the show notes page because I've referenced it so many times. It was just oh, yeah. fresh on my brain. Please do. I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're also running a giveaway right now with Story Prompt. So You can sign up for the giveaway in the show notes page. And um, we're giving away one starter pack, I think it is, of story prompt where you can have the asynchronous videos. You can have campfires. You can grab case studies and testimonials. What am I missing? I think you covered pretty much everything. Yeah, so you can also have um, video production done for you automatically. Oh, yeah, you can pick your producer (laughs) that does the music and the vibe for you. I love that. Yeah, so if you're a small marketing team and you want to just get the content, you can have Story Prompt just generate any sort of size video if you want square portrait landscape automatically for you. Yeah, I'm actually running an in-person workshop soon where people are bringing their video in to create their content for the whole next quarter. So I might have to tell them about Story Prompt, how to make it so much easier. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right. Can you tell everybody how they can find you, how they can start with Story Prompt? Yeah, if you want a demo, feel free to reach out to me personally. I'm always happy to kind of give you a tour and maybe help help uh, show you how you can use it in your business. So you can email me at gavin at storyprompt.com or just visit storyprompt.com and you can sign up for a free account. We have a free plan to get started. Uh, or find me on Twitter or LinkedIn, just search for Gavin Hammer. But yeah, I'm always available, always happy to chat to anyone who's interested in learning more about video first marketing. Yes. And I can tell you from my experience, I've been using Story Prompt for about a year and it's really cool. And it it sparks ideas, like creative ways that I can rethink my services and my packages to work better for everybody involved. People are really enjoying asynchronous right now. They still want that one-to-one connection, but on their terms. And this gives you an opportunity yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if you want to experience a, a kind of a video first community uh, on our website, storyprompt.com, I don't know if you're a member, Sarah, have you joined our, our user community? The campfire? Yeah, so the actual Story Prompt uh, Thrive community space. So if you go to the website and go to, uh, you know, on the top tab, it says community. From there, anyone can just join our user community and see what it feels like to kind of be in a face-to-face community. Because it is fairly different, fairly unique, unlike any other experience you've probably felt before uh, in these tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's some really cool options out there for consultants and coaches to like rethink their packages. So I'm just I'm stoked to dig into it a little bit further because I just got an upgraded package. So I'm gonna. <laughs> Dig oh, yeah. into all of those features. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> all right. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much, Sarah. Today, we talked about how to use video to improve your business. You can use it to create async support, community, and build trust with your audience. Think about it this. How are you going to use video to build trust with your people? Some action steps I want you to take after today's episode are 1. Go to the show notes page and sign up for our giveaway to get Story Prompt free for a year. That's a $480 value. And two, start thinking about how you can add more async support for your business so you can enjoy your summer. It's summertime. Let's do some vacation. Let's make ourselves a little, like a summer break, like we're in elementary school again, but work style. And do me a favor. And follow this podcast wherever you listen and tell your friends about it. I'll see you next time. Hello, and thank you for joining Tiny Marketing. I help tiny marketing departments create consistent content that builds trust with their audience. Book done-for-you content marketing at sarahnoelblog.com. Don't forget to follow, rate, and review the podcast on your favorite podcast app. See you next time, friends.